Good morning, Metroplex, Sean, RJ, and Bobby. And I think the most surprising development of the week was when we were told we were going to get Craig Ludwig to fire up the Zoom for the fan cam Twitch and YouTube. This is pretty cool. This is pretty cool getting Lud out there, and he's got his uh, he's got his Dallas backwards hat, his true brand hat on, and yeah, nice little microphone setup he's got it at the house. I like it. All right, let's see if uh, he's he's connected with us. Craig, are you there? You got us. Uh, yes, I've got you as long as Gavin Spittle's not on the line. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give us the pros and the cons of doing the uh, the the Spits and Suds podcast with our boss. Well, first off. Who, who who named him the the what, something hawk the, hockey, the, hawk. hockey hawk hockey hawk yes <laughs> who, who who gave him that that uh, title you know I I think it may have been self appointed yeah, was, can you yeah. can you name yourself can you nickname yourself yeah well it it should be more like the hockey sparrow or or something <laughs> like that the hawk the hawk doesn't really if you've seen Gavin he doesn't look like the hawk you know out here. <laughs> I'm on Lake Louisville, and you know how them great big crows are flying around? There's that that little tiny bird that's always on the back of its tail. That yeah. that's me on the spits and suds. I mean, that's that's I'm the big black bird, and the little <laughs> hockey sparrow is the one nipping at my heel. Bobby, this is about to be your favorite interview of the year. Oh, now, man. have you ever gone out? Have you tested Gavin's drinking ability? Have you ever gone gone out and slammed a few? He doesn't have one. He's uh, oh no, <laughs> no. He'll he'll have he'll have his his little uh, I don't know something pink, and he has some little pink thing in a martini glass. And then uh, I'll ask him, "Are you having another one?" Oh yeah, I'm having another one. And then by the time we leave an hour later, it hasn't been touched. So that kind of. <laughs> but a lot of people would call that a responsible drinker. So I'll 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 lay off on that. <laughs> how is the uh, how, how is your how is your current? Is it, are you still in game in game shape in the drinking world as you were in your playing days? Oh yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I try to I try to maintain my level. So we, you know, I we have a we have a couple leagues. I think we have like three different men's leagues that we play in. So, as a matter of fact, I got a game today at noon. Um, so that <laughs> that kind of keeps you in the rhythm. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if we're gonna go out. What are you doing? Are you, are you just going straight beer? Are you mixing it up? What can you alternate? No. You go with a liquor day or or all beer? I, I don't do. I I honestly I don't do the liquor thing very often. I I'm a beer guy. I, I stick with my Miller Lite, and uh, I just figure I'm still I'm still around. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So th there's the odd time I'll I'll have a little Crown, a little Crown and Coke or something like that. Mm -hmm. But that that's very very few. I'm I'm a Miller Lite guy. So I'm how, loyal. How many Millers right now at the lake house? Do you have a kegerator? Do you, you go in? <laughs> you got <laughs> cases? What's the setup out there? Yeah, it, it's it's a, it's kind of a case thing. Um, my kids are my kids have kind of followed in the footsteps too. You know, so oh, they're they're awesome. Miller Lite guys. Too. One of, one of them is actually a craft. Uh, CJ, my youngest one. He's into the craft thing. Him and his, him and his wife like getting out and bopping around and doing the craft beer thing and stuff like that. But the other two are are, are kind of loyal also. So we need some kind of sponsorship for the for the Ludwig clan here from from Miller Lite. So there there, there goes my uh, my pitch for the day. <laughs> now, uh, you ever done a family Ludwig shotgun out in the backyard? The funnel? <laughs> uh, who who would win that? Just straight pounding them to see who can chug one the fastest. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, show the old man dad strength. <clears throat> yeah, they're they're not gonna they're not gonna win that battle. But unfortunately, around here, a shotgun actually means shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, Stanley Cup champ Craig Ludwig joining us here on 105.3 The Fan. Um, all right, so in terms of the stars, I mean they're they're looking at the at the one seed now. Is the first round the most scary for a one seed? Just getting out of that first round and avoiding the upset because you know you'll you'll see an eight over a one in the NHL more often than the other sports. Yeah, you know I I think yeah there's there's a certain weight that comes with that, but uh, the weight is the worth it. I mean in the, you know the heaviness of being first overall is worth it. And I was just talking to Gavin about this the other day, and you know <clears throat> we were talking yesterday, and I said the Rangers kind of were sitting pretty good, but when you look at the the schedule that the two teams, uh, Dallas and, and the Rangers, have. Uh, the Rangers had to play the Islanders a couple times. Then they lost last night to the Islanders. I think the Islanders are kind of that stingy team. And so, right now, I, I really, I still believe Dallas can get there. And <clears throat> you know what happened to us? 
you know, back in 99. And, and I was saying that it, it's important. Yeah, I think it's important to try to have, uh, you know, that first overall and have, have home ice throughout the playoffs. When we went into Buffalo um, for game six, uh, you know, we, we could, we knew that we could finish that one. And, but with, if we didn't, we had an opportunity to come back home to Dallas and for Buffalo, there's a different weight on your shoulders. You know, it's, it's a do or die thing. So there is a little bit more pressure and it's just nice to have in your back pocket. You hope you never need to, to use it. <clears throat> I think the last team, any, any sport wants to go to is a game seven. Um, Cause you just get the game sevens. You just never know. So, mm -hmm. Dallas, you know, when you look at their numbers, you look at their lineup, you look at the depth that they have, the way that they've played this year. And I think from a fan, especially, um, it's nowhere near, in my opinion, to when we played, because this is an exciting team. I mean, our our game and even that era was built around, you know, keeping the puck out of your net more so than putting it in the other one. And so there was a lot of 2-1 games and uh, things like that. So now it's just it's back and forth. And, and for Dallas, it's just more forth. I mean, when you watch them play, they spend a lot of time in the offensive zone and that's the way they're built. So it's an exciting team for the Dallas Stars fans. Um, and they are sitting right where they want. And I think things are starting. And when I say things, I mean the players. And there are certain players. And I think Jake is getting back to his form. And uh, I think he's only given up like seven goals in the last five games. So, you know, there's just the odd one, I think, that he would want to clean up because those are the ones that sometimes will come back and haunt you. But I think we know that Ottinger, when he is the guy, what, what we're looking for is that guy that was in the Calgary series. Mm -hmm. And and I think Jake knows that. And I think, you know, he's just such a calm, cool kid. Um, you get him playing on top of his game, and these guys are able to carry it into the playoffs. They're, you know, they're something to be reckoned with. But again, the playoffs are a completely different animal. All the stats that you accumulate throughout the year – the goals, the season Wyatt's having, the season that whole team is having, you, everybody starts at zero in game one. So, but I do think that they've got some guys there that are hungry. And, you know, Matt Duchesne's hungry. Jamie Benn is hungry. Tyler Sagan, it's been 12, 13 years since he won his last cup. And I was in that same scenario a long time ago. And you think you're never going to get back again. And, and the younger players know that. They know that there's some guys that are, their careers are winding down. They're going to be around for a couple, two, three, four, whatever that may be. So the younger players know that. And and, and I think this is a really close-knit team. And I think they're in it for each other, which is the most important thing. Craig Ludwig joining us on the DNM Leasing Hotline here on 105 through the fan. Craig, how many other teams would you put above the stars as championship favorites? Well, I mean, I don't think you can ever count out Colorado in, in the West. And, um, you know, they've got to get you know, one of their top guys, Ryan, and has been injured. And so we'll see if they get him back. Um, I don't know if they have the goaltending to, to get them through. I, I think their goaltending has been suspect at times. And a possible opponent would be Vegas. And, and I just, in the West, I think that Vegas is now their goaltender that, you know, ran, them, ran the table with them last year has been hurt. I think he's coming back uh, sometime soon here. So, but for me, Vegas worries me from the standpoint, eh, it doesn't worry me. It, it can, it's a, it, it's a depth thing. I think they've got the best top six, whatever you want to call it, defenseman. And I think that's what carried them through last year, along with a couple other things uh, in the East, man, uh, obviously the Rangers, Carolina, Boston, you know, so, but that you don't have to worry about so much, you know, until you mm -hmm. get to that last round. So in the West, it would be, as you talked about in the first round, I don't, I don't look at, at Las Vegas uh, being a, a, a number eight seed, if that's where they finish, you know what I mean? Like there, there's some other eight teams and they could play LA. I mean, there's a couple different options that they could play there. Um, but if you, and we know what happened with, you know, Vegas in the last time that they played them. So, but then again, that can be motivation too, but I, I would look at Colorado Vegas and, and a lot of people would say Edmonton. I just think that Edmonton, they've got two big bullets in their gun, obviously dry Seidel and, and the other guy that, that other guy's pretty good, uh, McDavid. So, but I just think that Dallas made a point last time Edmonton came to town uh, against that team. And that goes a long way. So, um, you know, so we'll see, but, but again, I think for the stars, they don't worry about their opponent. They, they, they mm -hmm. just say, listen, 
we've got the best plus minus goals for goals against differential in the league. There's a reason we have that. We score a lot. Uh, for the most part, we keep it out of our net. We're just going to play our game. We're not really going to worry about who the opponent is. Lud, Robertson did not have a great start to the postseason uh, last year. They were still able to win those games, those series. Um, you know, like outside of Otter, is he the one that really has to, or not, not even him, who has to step up and play above their talent level for them to really advance in the cup run? Well, you know, I, I, I think the line in, as a whole, I don't, you know, that was the big line, right? I mean, with Pavs and, and Hints and Robo, that, that was your big line for a long time. The good news for Dallas is now all of a sudden, well, then there was a point this year, for most of the year, in my opinion, it, it was Matt Duchesne's line. And, and you know, that, that line seemed to be the best line. Well, now it's Wyatt Johnson. I mean, this is a good problem to have. So, and I think when you have that, there's less pressure on Robo coming into the playoffs thinking, I got to do this. Because now all of a sudden, you've got a whole group doing it. Where I, I think his first couple of years, you know, we put up some good numbers, young guy, pressure. And the other thing is, a lot of that can be alleviated, I, I think, by... It's the opponent. So the opponent's got to figure out who are we who are we taking our guys and what what line for the Dallas Stars are we trying to shut down here? So he may that line, I should say, may get opportunities where you're not getting let's just say they play Vegas. You're not gonna see Stone. You're not gonna see Mark Stone as much because I think you know they <laughs> they're gonna go, okay, wait a second. This Johnson kid is the hot one right now and that line, but then oh yeah, if Matt Deshane gets going and March, I mean, there, there's just so many options, and I and I think that's probably a conversation that, that I would be having with that line or that player and just say, listen, there's no pressure on you. And you could say the same thing to Wyatt. Even, you know, keep it going, but there's no pressure on you. We've got other guys. Everybody's going to carry this torch, and there should be no pressure on one certain person. My, my whole thing is going to be, for, for Dallas, is the decor. And, and you know, have that six that when you get on the road especially – and you don't have last change and you get, you know, whoever it may be out there, can can they survive or, or can they do the job when you're on the road against other teams' top lines if that's how they want to match up? We're talking with Craig Lugwood here on 105.3 The Fan. Craig, you know, when you look at the, the stars, you mentioned how important home ice would be for them. Just in general, it is in the NHL playoffs. But Dallas has been one of the better road teams in the NHL over the past two seasons. Best record this year. What is it about you know, them on the road, you think that they're able to maintain their level of play. There hasn't been much of a drop off compared to home. I think for all the reasons I was just saying earlier is they, they don't, they don't have to worry now. I don't think Pete DeBoer has to worry so much now about getting the right players against or away from whatever the other team wants to do with the, you know, the home team obviously has last change. I don't think you have to worry about that. I think the players know that. We're just going to go out and play. We don't really care who matches up. So uh, anytime you play on the road and you play in the playoffs on the road, especially uh, who needs to be your best player? <laughs> you know, it's your goaltender. And um, <clears throat> so at the end of the day, for the most part, playoff hockey, it ends up being, you know, it, it, he's one of the top two guys, top three guys, that most important ones. So, um, but again, I, I don't think that, that Otter really even knows if he's playing at home or away. I, I really don't. I just think he's got that that calm demeanor about himself. I don't think, and and you don't see it. And that's that's a good thing about Jake is is, is if he's not having a good game, you don't. He doesn't show it, and, and he just he, there, there's not a lot a lot of emotion that comes out of him. So, um, I just I'm 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 just saying I I just think this team has got all the elements, and so does the Rangers. I mean, there's other teams that have the elements, too. They believe in themselves, too. But, um, like I said, they're, they've I'll, – I'll, I'll put it this way. <clears throat> I, I'm an old-school guy, and I believe in defense and stuff like that. And the team, the team that, that I work with and coach, a U18 team that we traveled around the country, there's three years ago, and – I said to the other coach, I said, listen, I'm going to go against the grain and everything that I totally believe in because I think we have a team that can score four to five goals a night. And, and uh, you know, all this defending and let's not put all the pressure on that. Let's play to our strengths. And I think that's what this team can do. And I think that's exactly what they're doing. They're saying they get down, they get down last night. Do you think there's one guy that was panicking when they were down a goal? Do you think there's anybody panicking when they're down two goals going into the third period? 
I, I just think there's a belief in this group that's like, we've done this all year. We've been down. We can come back. Otter's going to take care. You know, he's not giving up any more goals. We already know that. And I just think that's the belief that they have in each other. Uh, this was absolutely tremendous, especially the beginning. Uh, next time you see our boss, tell him that we did not put you up to that. And we can't wait to have you back on again. Have a great game today, Craig. Miller's on us. That's got to hurt me having to call him your boss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the great Craig Ludwig here on the DNWC Hotline. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Have a great day.